Hi, my name is Matti Tahonen. On this video, I will introduce you a method to create a simple JPA packed web apps quickly with Vardin and our brand new version of JPA container. In addition to supporting JPA2, we mostly focused on helping application developers to create simple web apps in a very, very rapid manner. I'll start my project with a Maven archetype that we created along with the new version. It helps to get started quickly by setting up a web application project with all relevant dependencies. By default it uses Eclipse Link and H2 database. The archetype also sets up a persistence XML file. To complete the minimalistic backend, there is a simple entity class called person. It has some basic fields suitable for an address book application and also a boss relation to another person. The MyBardin application is a general purpose application skeleton that can edit virtually any entity type. It lists all known entity types from the persistency context to a tree, which is used as a navigation. When a type is selected, it opens a generic helper view for that type. The editor view lists all known entities in a table with a JPA container. From the table, the selected item is set into a form, which is spiced with a custom field factory implementation provided by the latest version of JPA container. Now let's look at what we got for free. I'll start the application into a Tomcat. The project also has a widget set setup, but I'll just ignore it as there is only server-side add-ons currently used. Starting the project takes a while as the Eclipse links initializes the persistency context and the database schema into the H2 database. There we go. Now, on the left side, we can see our entity types. On the top of the view we can see all instances of the selected type and when we select an item we can edit it. What I'd like to emphasize at this point is the boss select that was automatically created by JPA container field factory. By default Vardin can only build fields for basic data types. Now let's make Mark happy and save the entity. Okay, next we'll try some more complex stuff with the domain model and see how our application can survive. Let's assume we got a requirement to support multiple addresses per person. We'll need to move the address to a separate class and reference those from the person. If you're familiar with JPA, you can pretty easily follow what I'm doing here. I'll remove all the address stuff from the person. Then I will create a new class for the address. Then I'll add those same fields to the address class and also add a field where user can store the type of the address, like work or home. As we are working with JPA2, I don't need to make the address entity but I can use embedded and element collection annotations instead. With Eclipse, I can easily add getters and setters. Okay, now let's get back to the person class. And on this side, I'll add a field whose type is a set of addresses. The element collection annotation in JPA2 is pretty similar to one to many annotation, but I can use embeddables instead of entities in a collection.
now. Our domain modifications are ready, but there is a still a compilation error in the application class. There is a small code snippet that generates some test data that needs to be changed. I'll just remove the address related stuff now. Now we are ready to relaunch the application. The Eclipse link again updates the database schema and I'm again considering to order a solid state drive for my Mac. Okay, now if we choose a person for editing, we can see some changes. The address part is gone. If we go to the application class, we can see that the archetype has put some person related configurations for the editor. I'll replace the old fields with the new element collection field. Now let's get back to the application and use the famous debug parameter to restart the Badin application. Now we can see that the field factory has generated a generic editor for the address collection field. It is based on table and its items are editable in line. Now, I'm not quite happy with the order of the fields in the element collection editor. Let's open the basic crude view class and configure the JPA field factory it uses. I'll define the visibility and the desired order of the fields for the address type. Then we can reload the application again and we can see that the properties are now in the proper order. That's it and thanks for your interest. In the second part of this video I will show you how we can add a department support for this very simple application. Stay tuned.